Hey golf people, I've got one of the hottest drivers of the year that I'm taking out on course today, the Callaway Rogue ST Max. <laughs> I'm pumped. We're gonna take this out on course, see what she does. We've got real life scenarios here. It's a beautiful morning. No excuses to hit some bombs. Let's do it. All right, guys, I literally just picked this up. I have not even hit this thing yet. It is absolutely fresh. You're gonna see my first shots at these, my first impressions, and we're gonna see how this thing does. Just to give you a little setup here, I've got a nine degree model, and I've got it set at plus one degrees, meaning I've got 10 degrees here, otherwise neutral. All right, so no draw bias. This is always like a Rubik's Cube to put these things together. They've gotta to be just the right combination. I'm also playing the Tensei stiff shaft now this is a 55 grammar usually i'm playing 60. we'll see if we can get a little faster swing speed there with the 55 stiff flex as always we've got our trusty g80 here where it's going to give us the ability to measure our shots as well as give us some club data my favorite device the g80 from garmin available at playbetter.com our show's sponsor i'll leave a link down below so you can purchase it and support this show now let's get into it all right this is a good hole because we've got a bunker left a shorter bunker right, which we should be able to carry. It's pretty straight away and pretty flat, this long par five here at Harrowwood. Well, for the first ball there, I'm gonna say this. You can probably see how low on the face I just hit that. I hit that very low on the face, but it still got up in the air really well. I had club head speed 95, ball speed 138, smash factor, 1.45 for a shot on the face that low, that's very good. Estimated carry 214, carry and roll 231. We'll see where that one is, but if I get 231 out of that drive, I'd be very happy because it was not a very well struck ball. Let's try to hit one good this time. That one completely off the toe. I hit it right there. I wasn't warming up well, and it's also not going so well on course here, but again, so far, those shots could be really bad and they're not too bad. 221 carry and roll. Club head speed 95, ball speed 134, smash factor 1.41. Better drive there. Got one in the fairway. Club head speed 95, smash factor 1.47, ball speed 140, estimated carry and roll 236. I'm gonna try to hit one more here though. Oh, that was better. A little, a little cut to it. This one looks cut actually. Club head speed 97, ball speed 141, smash factor 1.45, estimated carry and roll 239. I think it's better. It is a wet, dewy day out here in the morning, so the ball's not gonna travel as far, but let's see how far it went and let's measure these shots. Well, guys, I really love the first generation of these Callaway Rogues. And this generation, I'm already liking what I see and most importantly feel off the first tee here. I know that those first couple of swings were not very good at all. And yet that ball flew straight and it flew far. In terms of club feel and sound, about as good as a club gets. It's got a nice pleasant thud to my ear. And the way the ball feels on the face, on the on that pure shot, that last one felt really good. Nice compression of the ball. On the other ones, again, I could feel exactly where I hit it, which makes me a better golfer when I know where I hit the ball for one thing, but it also felt still pretty good. I didn't get that tingy vibration. It's a cold day out here. Sometimes those hurt. If you remember the old drivers of yore, sometimes those shots actually hurt. Had no feeling like that. The sensation was really nice coming off the club face. I'll continue to walk you through what I like and dislike about this driver, but so far, I've only got likes. Now guys, we're about to witness a miracle in my mind because there's four balls in the fairway and three of those shots, I'd say they're pretty poor. We've got one right here, one over here just on the right side of the fairway, one, the best one's gotta be that last one up there and one right over here. Hey guys, <laughs> you can't argue with four in the fairway and that second shot was so bad. I hit it right off the toe, it was horrible. Wow. 230, again, uh, 231 off a not so well hit ball there. Now this ball, I believe was the first ball I hit. So again, very low on the face. 
but 227, again, wet, dewy morning. It's not earth shattering, but the fact that it's in the fairway is huge. And I've still got a good look at uh, a nice layup and approach shot here. Coming up to the ball that was dead off the toe, dead off the toe, 232, amazing. I don't know how that happened. I really don't. That was crazy. But this was our best strike. Again, it had a little bit of a cut to it. I'm okay with that. I normally hit a draw, but I'm okay with that. I think I'm getting used to this shaft as well. Just a little lighter than I'm used to. 251 with a very well struck ball there. Again, I'll take all four of those. For as poor as those first three swings were, very excited. Now I'd love to see a little bit more distance out of this driver, certainly. Let's see if we can do that in the next hole. Now, I always get the question, what is this like compared to this driver or that driver? And lucky for you, we're gonna be doing a March Madness battle of the top eight drivers of the year. And this Rogue ST will be in the mix, certainly. Battling it out to see who's the driver of 2022 for Let's Play Through. We're gonna have some fun in a March Madness style bracket. There will be seven full episodes battling those eight drivers out and we're going to crown a champion at the end so make sure that you are subscribed to this channel if you aren't already get subscribed because we're going to have a lot of fun here in march all right hole number two here this is the hardest hole of all 27 holes we have here at carrollwood and the reason is it takes a very long drive and a very long iron to get into this green and it's really narrow up here lake on the left you don't want to be in that we've got all these cypress trees running down the right hand side that we don't want to be in that i've seen lots of balls go into the other fairway luckily we've got a driver that hopefully won't do that to us but i've got to hit a good drive here if i'm going to get home in two on this very long par four and so let's see if the road can perform Club speed 96, ball speed 141, smash factor 1.47. I caught a lot of that ball. Estimated carry and roll 239. Oh man, <laughs> I almost hit a bird that flew by, I swear to you. Wow, that's picture perfect. Club head speed 97, smash factor 1.48, ball speed 144, estimated carry and roll 247. That's a little bit more like it. Let me hit another shot here. Oh, a little lower on the face, but again, a bullet, a straight bullet. Club head speed, 100 miles an hour. Smash factor though, 1.4. I didn't catch it in the middle. Ball speed, 140. Estimated carry and roll, 235. But again, perfect for a poor swing. Perfect landing spot. Oh, wow. Man, that felt good. It feels really good off the face. Little left side of the fairway there. Club head speed 100, ball speed 147, smash factor 1.48. I guess it would be 1.47 if that, yeah. Semantics, probably rounding that number. Estimated carry and roll 257. Let's go find out. Well guys, eight shots and seven of those shots in the fairway with not so amazing swings mixed in there for sure with a couple of good ones. Whoo, as a fairway finder, the Rogue ST Max delivers, no doubt about it. I gotta go back to feel here in terms of the club face. Of all the drivers I've tested over the last couple of years, best feeling driver. I'm gonna go ahead and crown the Rogue ST the best feeling driver in terms of being able to know where on the club face that ball is hit, and in terms of the pleasant compression-like feel of the club when it strikes the ball. Woo, it feels really good. Whoa, guys, <laughs> I think I was wrong. I didn't think there was any chance this ball could hit the fairway, and yet it's on the fairway. <laughs> I, can't, I was expecting to be in the rough. There's no way in my mind this ball could have... I wonder if this is even my ball because... Let's find out. Guys, this was an absolutely atrocious swing here. Absolutely atrocious. I pulled it. That's 227. That, my friends, is fairway. 
yeah, it's a long way from home, but that's in the fairway. I can't, I really, I am shocked that that ball is in the fairway. Really am. Ooh, we got some good balls up here. This ball was the one I hit a little lower on the face, okay? So distance is down. That's not down by that much, guys. 243. Absolutely perfect angle at this hole. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Let's see what this one is. Oh yeah. Now that's gonna rival about one of the longest drives I've had so far this year, 266. Definitely not ideal conditions. Very wet and dewy out here. I did not get a lot of roll. That's big. Now that's what I'm talking about. And there should be one other ball over here. There is. This is the biggest drive, just slight, ever so slightly. On most golf courses, this would actually be fair because again, dead straight shot at the hole. It's just, this is kind of a funky hole the way it turns. You're not gonna believe the distance on this one, guys. 275, biggest drive of the year that I've hit so far. Big, 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 big. And that one felt good. Those two felt good, the 265 and 275. Test number three coming up here. Forgiveness is great, but does that come at the expense of being able to work the ball? I'm gonna try to hit some fades here on the next hole and see what happens. Now guys, I honestly have not seen another review on this driver. I know it's hard to believe that, but I try to maintain integrity in these reviews and I don't want to be soured or tainted or have my expectations too high on any drivers. So the only things I've heard is actual comments on my other videos from our own community, the Let's Play Through community, telling me how good they think this driver might be. Well guys, so far I'm impressed. Very, very impressed. Uh, if we explore this face a little bit, you've got a flash face and it's got all sorts of grooves and milling there in that face. You've got carbon fiber here throughout, giving it some lightness and all the weights back here, you've got this big tungsten weight in the back that's going to provide a little higher trajectory, a little more MOI and a little bit more forgiveness. No movable weights on this driver, which I am happy with because that means there's less that can break or go wrong. Really interesting driver. The shape too is interesting. I don't know if you can see it here, but it's not exactly like a half moon. It's a little wider out here, maybe more conical, I guess. I don't even know how to describe that shape, but uh, it's not so circular. This is actually a little bit elongated here. All right, so we're gonna see how this thing does if I can fade the ball a little bit. In order to fade the ball, what I do is I weaken my grip just a little bit instead of that strong grip. I go a little bit weaker. I open that face just a little bit and I move the ball up in my stance at a dress. Try to take a more outside to in swing. Any number of those will help you fade the ball. Hopefully I don't over fade it. Let's see how this thing does. Just a tight little butter cut there. Great trajectory. I don't think I took a very big swing. I didn't. 90 mile an hour club head speed, ball speed 129, smash factor 1.42, estimated carry and roll a whopping 206, but this is a short hole. And uh, I was going for control there. I'll try to hit one a little bit bigger, but uh, so far I like that little butter cut. That one was pretty straight. Pretty straight there. Club head speed 96, that's better. Smash factor 1.46, ball speed 140, estimated carry roll 237. There it is, again, little butter cut there. That's a power fade. Club head speed's up at 94, ball speed at 137, smash factor 1.45, estimated carry roll 227. So somewhere in between those two, let's go find out. All right, so possibly one little chink in the armor if you consider it a chink here for the calorie rogue st i would say with the types of swings i just made i should have seen a little bit more dramatic of a fade but on the flip side i'm pretty happy with that ball flight i would love a little butter cut like that very controllable a fade is a much more controllable shot 
you'll see a lot of PGA Tour professionals prefer the fade. I think Phil won his championships playing a fade, and we've seen a lot of good golfers go to a fade at very tough courses where you've got to control that swing. It gives you a one-way miss, usually. <laughs> I did say chink in the armor, and that's because, you know, again, I would like to see it a little bit more twisty, but on the flip side, to have that trajectory, to be able to trust it, and to know that maybe you can make a mistake and open that club face just a little wider than you want or take a little bit more outside in swing and not pay a price for it, there's something to be said for that too. Maybe not the most workable driver, but that forgiveness is gonna probably make it the most useful driver here, at least of what I've tested so far. But of course, we've gotta go through the paces with this thing and test it up against the other ones in its category on the same day and same condition. So we will find out. But I don't think I'd be too upset with either three of these drives. All right, guys. Well, we've got two in the fairway, very consistent there. That's nice to see. This is the one drive that uh, didn't quite fade on me, but it still flew a long way. Let's get the distance up here. I love this little device. 227. 227 is where this thing landed. Still got a great, great look at that pin. Let me zoom in for you. Oh yeah, it's beautiful out here today, isn't it? Now these are pretty much directly across the fairway. This one was a slightly lower trajectory. 235, again, a fade shot, not gonna have quite as much power just because of the spin that's imparted to it. But that's just fine. I've got a wedge into that green. And we've got this one here at 234. So really close to each other. I would say they were within six to seven yards of each other. Guys, really impressed with what I just saw here today. I gotta say, I will likely be keeping this one in my bag for a little bit longer. I really like that Cobra LTD X as well. I'm gonna leave a video to that one. That's the only one that might contend with this for my bag right now. Until March Madness, at least. I'll catch you guys very soon here on another edition of Let's Play Through.